Peace, peace. What's up with it, BCU? Turn up one time. How y'all feeling out there? Um, right now, we want to ask that everyone take the time to hit the like button. We also want to ask, bro, that the fam share the videos out. That's one thing we've been really, really lacking on. Um, yeah. Um, so let's try to be mindful of that. Hit the like button. How y'all feeling out there? I hope y'all had an excellent night of sleep last night. And for the people that was out grinding, goddamn me. Um, we're gonna get right into it, man. We got a a, a show today, man. Um, we're gonna get right into it, man. So need y'all to hold the chat down too. Without further ado, I present to you. Let me share my screen. And the deputy grandmaster of Prince Hall Mason University of South Carolina, uh, and my live mate, uh, from Pennsylvania. As Sybil pointed out, um, the, uh, the book we produced, The History of the Virtual Prince Hall Grand Lodge with the District of Columbia from 1822 to 2016, uh, was a six year work of research and writing. Um, but rather than talk about the details of the book, I'm going to talk about it in a way in terms of the social impact. Uh, today, I will, uh, the topics of discussion, uh, the early history of Prince Hall Masonry here in the District of Philadelphia, 1822 to 1849. I'm going to talk about the antebellum uh, period, the district, 1850 to 1863, specifically. The uh, Civil War Reconstruction, 1863 to 1880, and finally the post Reconstruction to the turn of the century, 1880 to 1900. Uh, the early the early history of Prince Hall Masonry. Uh, the Prince Hall Masonry starts in Washington D.C. officially in 1825, but before 1825, there were some things that occurred which caused the um, uh, brothers to turn the history as a way to solve their problem. When the uh, federal government, when the Constitution was written, it provided for the creation of the District of Columbia for the federal capital. After uh, the, the 10 mile square was laid out and the uh, government moved from Philadelphia to Washington in 1800, uh, what, we, what they found were there were some free African Americans living within the borders of the district, but there were no rules or laws which applied to them. There were only rules or laws that applied to those still in captivity in the institution of slavery. But in 1816, a unique set of experiences started to occur. The founding of the American Colonization Society. Now, this was done because the, uh, the Plantation owners, slave owners, um, had a problem with the growing number of free Africans that were beginning to uh, live in the country, but there were no real provisions for them. The same was true here in the District of Columbia. So in 1816, they came up with a plan, of course, of shipping all the free blacks out of America. Uh, they, they got funding and formed uh, what we know as the colony of Liberia on the west coast of Africa and set about trying to ship all free blacks to Liberia. Uh, in the district, in 1821, following the um, lead of the American Colonization Society, the District Board of Aldermen uh, passed what we call the harshest set of black codes, which limited, limited the ability of free blacks to move about in the District of Columbia. And that caused quite a concern to many free blacks. So in 1822, a man, John W. Prout, a brother from Philadelphia, called a meeting in his house in Georgetown. And he had about 20 brothers who came to the meeting, and he made a plea to them that they should form a Masonic Lodge. 
and he used the example of what the brothers had done in Boston, Massachusetts, as the reason why they needed to form on the same block. Uh, what he talked about was one, the, the men who formed the revolution, who led the revolution, and who were leading the government were mostly Freemasons. Uh, Prince Hall, the founder of the order, had found that uh, he was able to get citizenship status for free blacks in Boston by writing to the city council, having uh, white Freemasons on that council, and he found a listening ear. Uh, his first letter, uh, you can find it in the a book entitled the Letters of Prince Hall, uh, to this council was to get permission to build a school for the uh, free uh, black children of Boston, and that was granted. Uh, later on, he wrote and asked for permission to build a church. And later on, his slides uh, wrote and asked for permission to build what we now know today, which is the historic African meeting house. So steps to citizenship were achieved in Boston, which had not been achieved anywhere else. In, 18, in 1797, uh, the same uh, plan was shipped to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania where Asselin Jones and Richard Allen, who had founded the um, uh, first black church in Philadelphia, uh, came to Boston because they were, again, suffering from some of the same indignities because they were not included in the legislation as citizens of Philadelphia. So they wanted to reproduce the uh, what I call the Prince Hall Temple to assert their rights in Philadelphia. At that time, the government itself uh, was housed in Philadelphia. They didn't move to Washington until 1800. So while in, while there, uh, a lot of the brothers who, had, who became Mason, Prince Hall Masons started to interact with those Masons in the federal government who helped them interact with the members of the Philadelphia legislature and the Philadelphia City Council, the Pennsylvania legislature and the Philadelphia City Council to get some rights for free blacks in Philadelphia. John Kraut, being from Philadelphia, knew what had happened. Therefore, he called for the brothers meeting in his house in Georgetown in 1822 to try to replicate the Prince Hall plan in the District of Columbia. Uh, they wrote uh, and asked for a permit to start a lodge. They got permission to do so on June of 1825, social lodge what we call socialized number one, was established here in the District of Columbia. Upon establishing the lodge in the district, brothers began to take their case to court for citizenship. The first of those actually took place before the lodge was formed, and that's the case of uh, William Billy Costin. Uh, Billy Costin became the first secretary of socialized number one, but he himself had a very interesting history. The Black Codes which limited his ability to move about the city, which prevented him from being on the streets after 10 o'clock at night, which prevented him from assembling with more than two other black men on the streets, he felt were an injustice to him. So he took his case to court, and a judge, William Cranch, heard the case. And he ruled that uh, Billy Costin uh, was grandfathered into conditions prior to the black codes being written and all other free blacks who lived in the, in the District of Columbia were not subject to the Black Codes since they were here before the codes were written. Another one of the members of Socialized, in fact, the Versal Master, John Trout himself, was later accused of uh, helping slaves to escape from the Underground Railroad to the District of Columbia. Uh, he was a school teacher. He could read and write, and he was accused of forging passes for free blacks passing through the district to go north. Uh, from my reading of the record, uh, he was guilty. Uh, that was uh, part of what he did. In fact, Socialized Number One was one of the stations of the Underground Railroad to the District of Columbia. However, the man who wanted to bring in a handwriting specialist to look at this document he had produced to prove that he had written the document, the judge didn't allow it, ended up fining Brother Kraut $50 and let him go. Same judge, William Prince. Right. Uh, a third, a third uh, brother in the same lodge um, was Brother Kenneth Beckett. Now, Brother 
Brother Becky had purchased the property in the District of Columbia while he was still, quote unquote, a slave. Uh, on this property, he built up two hot rooming houses, renting rooms to three blacks running the district. Well, uh, two white gentlemen decided to try to take this property, slot stating that a slave couldn't own property. And since this property was a, a money-making uh, piece of real estate, they wanted to take control of it. But, it, but, but the case, uh, again, heard before Judge William Prance, uh, Judge Prince ruled that Brother Kenneth Beckett uh, lawfully owned his property. And therefore, uh, a, a precedent was established that three blacks could own property in the District of Columbia. So it seems that John Pratt's uh, original discussion with the brothers was true, becoming Masons, interacting with Masons in the district. By the way, the federal government, of course, moved here in 1800, and there were many Masons on Capitol Hill. There were many Masons who came to Washington to interact uh, with the government. And even the crisis of 1825, known as the uh, Captain William Morgan affair, didn't neg negatively impact the progress that the uh, brothers were making uh, as Masons in the District of Columbia. Let me, before going to the, uh, the next step. So between 1825 and 1845, while uh, white Freemasonry was under attack from the anti-Masonic party and other individuals who were uh, disgusted with the rumors of the uh, murder of William Morton, uh, he did disappear. Um, white Freemasonry kind of had their head underground, but black Freemasonry was growing. In 1845, uh, we created our second lodge in the District of Columbia, Universal Lodge. At that time, uh, Universal Lodge was uh, created in Alexandria, Virginia. Now, Alexandria was still part of the 10-mile square of the district at that time. So it was Alexandria, the District of Columbia, where this, the Lodge Brothers were erected. The reason they were erected there, Alexandria being a port city, uh, several brothers had been made masons overseas in England. And uh, they resided in Alexandria and decided that it, the trip from Alexandria into Georgetown to meet with the brothers in Washington was getting uh, more difficult. So they wanted a lodge in Alexandria itself. So that was created. A year later, our third lodge, Felix Lodge, uh, was created in Washington, D.C., what we put, what's called Western Washington. Uh, so by 1846, we had three lodges. Uh, two years later, in March of 1848, these three lodges met in convention and formed the Grand Lodge. So as of 1848, we had the Union Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia uh, in terms of the expansion of uh, masonry here in the District of Columbia. So by the time we reached the Grand Lodge status, we were here to stay and weren't going anywhere. Uh, Union Grand Lodge created... Um, several civic organizations as a strategy to fight civil violence. What I mean is this. Instead of going into court or interacting with the people in, in the city as a Masonic organization, the brothers decided to create what's called the Social Civil and Statistical Association, the Bethel Literary Association, and the Young Men's Literary Association. So as they met, they met under one of those three titles with other people in the public, sort of as a cover for what they were doing, uh, advocating again for rights for free blacks in the District of Columbia. But by 1862, uh, Abraham Lincoln had been elected president, and there was rumors afoot that he wanted to send all the black folks out of the United States of America. So Abraham Lincoln, uh, through one of his uh, men, requested a meeting of uh, a delegation of free blacks from the District of Columbia to discuss the plan, the plan he called the Panama Plan. In, this, in that meeting, John T. Costin was a former Grand Master. In fact, he was the second Grand Master of Prince Hall Masons in the District. Ed, Edward W. Thomas had been Grand Master in 1861. And then there was this young up-and-comer, real um, 
energetic young man named Johnny F. Crook Jr. His father um, founded the, uh, the second school for free black folks in the city. Uh, he himself had been run out of the city. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, his father had been run out of the city in 1835 from what was known as the Snow Rack. But uh, and he would become and he would be a future Grand Master from 1865 to 1873. Uh, and of this five men delegation, two other men, Cornelius Clark, who was in the Social Civil and Statistical Association, but he wasn't a Mason. And Benjamin McCoy, Benjamin McCoy, a minister and teacher. In fact, he was the uh, founding minister of the Ashbury Church. Well, Abraham Lincoln made a long, a long plea to these men explaining why that after slavery, he saw no way that uh, free blacks would want to live in a country with people who had enslaved them. He thought because of the deaths during the Civil War that uh, the former Confederates would never forgive blacks they would call for charge them with being the reason that they lost relatives. So he had gotten $600,000 allocated from the United States Congress to ship all blacks out of the United States to an area of Panama, which was not what they called Panama at that time, but to Panama to become a, create a country of their own. Uh, he thought both free blacks and former slaves uh, should live in the country. And he needed this five man's delegation blessing to go about to the other free black communities and convince them to buy into his plan. This was August 14, 1862. The five man delegation um, heard the president's call, uh, was polite, but and only one of the five thought about perhaps supporting the president's plan. But since he didn't get the support of a full five-man delegation, Lincoln never brought the plan up again. So again, part of the impact of these men, especially those grand masters of Prince Hall Mason, them saying no to the president, they wouldn't support the plan, I assert is one of the reasons there is a black Washington, D.C. community today. Because if Lincoln had gotten this way, there would be no African Americans in the country at all would have been shut down. Uh, a lot of people have, in a lot of historical settings, as our history is told, especially during this period, this Panama plan is never brought up. The discussion that took place with the president is never brought up. And as far as I know, no one else has made an assertion about the impact of them not accepting the president's recommendation. Okay. <laughs> no information. Again, <laughs> Again, in the uh, in the book, uh, we, we we cover the meeting, and in fact, we thought it was of such importance that we have the entirety of the president's address to the five man delegation in the book. Okay, 1863 to 1880. Talk a little bit about that time. Following the Civil War, uh, Washington D.C. Uh, was kind of unique because all of a sudden, blacks began to move into uh, very important positions, like another the Reconstruction governments across the South. John F. Cook Jr., who I already mentioned, was appointed to collect the collective taxes for the District of Columbia. William A. Telfaro uh, was elected to the Common Council in 1868. Carter A. Stewart was elected to the Common Council in 1868 and the Board of Aldermen in 1869. So for a time period, part of the legislative Leaders of the District of Columbia were all Prince Hall Masons. And even though in the history of the District of Columbia, you might see their names mentioned, no mention is made of the fact that they were Masons. Okay, again, uh, John F. Cook. John F. Cook Jr., as I said, was Grand Master of the District of, of, of the Prince Hall Grand Lodge. He served two terms. His first one was 1866 to 1873, and he came back in the chair of the East from 18. 1876 to 1877. He was appointed by USSS Grant, uh, DC Chief Tax Collector, serving a 10-year term from 1874 to 1884. Cook served as a district delegate to the Republican National Convention in 1872 and 1880. And he was also appointed to be DC Jury Commissioner in 1889. By the way, his wife was also an activist. Uh, Helen Alco helped found the National Color Women's Group. Another one of our brothers was James Wormley. 
Uh, a lot of people don't know, but um, James Wormley uh, built or owned the, uh, one of the most prosperous hotels in Washington, D.C. in the 1870s. His hotel was at 15th and 8th Street Northwest. In fact, it became a favorite for Washington's rich and famous, attracted by well-managed rooms, renowned for scene. And in fact, his total soup and seafood uh, were considered to be uh, excellent dishes. And amenities such as the first hotel elevator and uh, the first telephone in the hotel was uh, in, in the Wormley Hotel at 15th and 8th Street. Uh, by the way, there's a school, the Wormley School in Georgetown, 3331 Prospect Street, which is there today, was uh, built and named in his honor. 1880 to 1900. Uh, because of Howard University, um, a lot of elite blacks were attracted to the District of Columbia, and such as Dr. Daniel Hill Williams, Dr. William A. Walker. In 1886, uh, the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia hosted the first ever uh, black industrial ex exposition. Um, that is, it was a black expo. 1886, right here in Washington, D.C., the only one held in the country during that time. But again, the brothers of the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia are the ones who sponsored it. It was held at the Shallow Baptist Church. Also, during this time period, there are a lot of writers. By the way, this is a uh, catalog from that uh, from that expo. It's basically the catalog first industrial exposition, the colored citizens of the District of Columbia, Masonic fraternity at Union Bethel Church, and it's September 1886. Uh, we're still trying. Uh, I can't find an original copy of the document, but I, I have this uh, facsimile of it. Uh, some prominent uh, Freemasons in D.C. during this time period. Uh, Dr. Samuel R. Watts, in fact, he was um, in Lodge number 25. Uh, no, let me back up. Dr. Samuel Watts was the 29th, the 25th Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. He was an internationally known doctor and uh, was very prominent, uh, prominently uh, figured in uh, his visits to uh, several countries in Europe. Um, Solomon G. Brown uh, once described as probably the best employee of the Smithsonian Institution. In fact, the original director of the Smithsonian Institution wanted to appoint him as his successor and stated that he couldn't do it because him being black, he knew that the uh, white power structure of the government wouldn't allow it. But in, in most instances where he's talked about, he was the most knowledge, knowledgeable person about the holdings of the Smithsonian Institution than any other employee of that institution. Uh, the next slide is Hamilton S. Smith. He was the 29th Grand Master of Mason Field. Uh, Hamilton S. Smith was also the son of the last living uh, master of African Lodge 459 of Boston. Uh, he was both a dentist and photographer. In fact, uh, one of his pictures is uh, graces the cover of a recently published book from Massachusetts about the Grand Lodge, the African, the Muslim the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Massachusetts, with the uh, authors just uh, using the picture on the book and not knowing who took the picture or anything about it. The, the irony about the picture, uh, during my research, in fact, I have the sister picture to the one that's on the cover of the book. The picture is of the most versatile Prince Hall Grand Lodge visit to Prince Hall Grade. And promptly in that picture, are a couple of past grand masters and some very important people that are not named on the cover of the book. Uh, the picture on the book contains is a picture of the men and women, the husbands and wives who went to the uh, on that visit. The sister picture is just a picture of the men, the masons who were on that trip. And again, that's part of our files. Uh, the other gentleman at the bottom, uh, Senator Blanche K. Bruce. Uh, was Prince Hall Mason. After, after serving his term in the uh, uh, in the government, uh, rather than go back to Mississippi, he settled down and became a leading socialite uh, here in the District of Columbia. Uh, next to him is uh, the 23rd Grand Master of Mason's here, Leonard C. Bailey. Leonard Bailey was the first uh, black New 
billionaire of the District of Columbia. He made his money as he designed a uh, trestle of holding in uh, for, for, for body wounds. He invented the trestle to hold the body parts in for the wounded men. He also invented the uh, folding army cat. You know, in fact, that folding army cat, I slept on one when I was in the military uh, myself, so it's still in use. And he made millions. And the millions that he made made him the founder of one of the first, the first black bank in the District of Columbia, Capital Savings Bank, down on F Street Northwest, which is picture beside it. Um, and as um, Dr. Moses pointed out, uh, two other people I like to talk about in uh, during the course of uh, writing uh, an article for the Masonic Digest, I wrote one about Washington, D.C.'s second most famous black power couple. And that is, uh, at that time, President Barack and Michelle Obama. But the first Washington, D.C. real black power couple was uh, Judge Robert Herbertson Terrell and Mary Church Terrell. Now, uh, uh, Robert Terrell, again, was one of our grand masters at the turn of the century, 1899 to 1902. Uh, he was the first black appointed judge here in the city and um, it was very significant in helping to found Sigma Pi Phi here in the District of Columbia. But probably more famously known was his wife, Mary Church Terrell. Mary Church Terrell lived until 1954. Uh, her husband passed away in 1925. She continued to be a leading social activist uh, fighting against segregation in the city. She was also a leading woman's suffragette. Um, in fact, uh, on the side, it's kind of a, a, a statement. She um, didn't want to become a uh, member of the Eastern Star, the female uh, affiliate of Prince Hall Mason. Uh, she told she was just too... Um, forward thinking, she said, she, as an independent, she was fighting for women's rights, and uh, she wanted to be a leader in that, and she didn't want to be in the organization. But uh, she was a leading proponent, and right up and just before her death, uh, she led markets here in D.C. I personally remember, remember her from the uh, early protest at Glen Echo Park. Any of you are older Washingtonians and know right outside of the district, Ben Echo Park was an amusement park that, again, desegregated, uh, wouldn't allow uh, uh, African Americans to attend. And she uh, marched against that establishment. So during the course of the 18th century, I'm sorry, the 19th century, uh, there are many books that's been written, literature written about blacks in D.C. during that period. Among those, Secret City, The History of Race Relations in the Nation's Capital by Constance Green. An excellent book I suggest uh, everyone would enjoy reading. Another one, Aristocrats of Color, The Black Elite, 1880 to 1920. Though Willard Gatewood's book wasn't talking just about D.C., the largest percentage of quote-unquote aristocrats of color were residents here in the city. Another book that talks a lot about the... Uh, uh, blacks in Washington, D.C., especially in the uh, latter part of the 19th century, is Leading the Race by Jacqueline M. Moore. By the way, all of these books are here in the Library of Congress, and most of them can still be acquired through uh, some of the uh, book selling outlets in the city. Uh, uh, the fourth book, The Black Anglo Saxons by Nathan Hare, is another that talks about this unique black Washington, D.C. community. What was unique about it is that through all of the negative circumstances that people had faced, what gathered here in the District of Columbia, primarily due to the three black Freemasons of the city, was the most sophisticated black middle class of any jurisdiction, any political jurisdiction in the nation. If you want to know where the quote-unquote uppity blacks were, they were in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and I use that term affectionately, both said by members of the race and, and described by many newspaper uh, reporters as they reported on the behavior of these people. But the idea of being organized, uh, fighting as an organized body for rights, and establishing a... Uh, what I 
I like to term a safe zone where black middle class people could freely express themselves and enjoy uh, citizenship without all of the um, pressures of black folks in, in, in other parts of the South. Remember, we're south of the Mason Dixon line. There was nowhere else in the South where blacks had as much freedom and an expression of themselves or created as much wealth as what happened here in the District of Columbia. At the foundation of what made all of that possible were Prince Hall Freemason. The fact that here in 18, 1822, when the, when the uh, process began, and the fact that they organized, fought for their rights, stuck together, uh, it's, it's quite an achievement for that to have occurred in the South. In the North, they say, during, especially in the Bellum days and during the 1800s, that uh, free blacks had more privileges. That, that might be true. But there was no city anywhere else in the nation where blacks had as much success during the uh, period of captivity uh, before the end of the Civil War. And immediately after the end of the Civil War, up to the turn of the century, the most successful uh, blacks in America as a group, as a class, uh, existed here in Washington, D.C. And the, their story is a result of the Prince Hall Freemasons of the city. Uh, we, we, we founded it. We are very proud of what we have done. And um, we, we only see uh, more success in the future. Um, our next work will address our successes and impact during the 20th century. But uh, for this presentation, we limited it to the 19th century because at that time, we think it reached kind of a peak of success that we like to talk about. Um, but um, I hope that uh, this little short overview of the book, you know, has been informative. And before we go outside to uh, start signing autographs or selling the book, I would like to take this time to entertain questions from you about uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Frederick Douglass did not become a Mason. In fact, uh, I'll say Frederick Douglass got my personal opinion. Frederick Douglass thought that the form of what we do in practicing Mason, the substance of what Masonry is, was a waste of time. He thought that men should be spending more time outwardly working for the freeing of those in captivity. So, he, but his son was a Mason, but he didn't come. Yes, ma'am. Sent off to college, 
and her grandfather and father took her on a tour of Europe following her graduation from college. That's, uh, uh, but a lot of people who looked at her when they see her, they wonder what her ethnicity is. Um, in fact, uh, another one of the stories of our uh, fraternity across the board is that um, in the early days, a lot of the leadership were mixed race brothers, or mixed race black men because of that one phenomenon. Not that they, they didn't escape and run north like a lot of blacks did, but a lot of them were actually given their freedom by their fathers and sent north or to other cities where they could live a decent life. And so I, I do understand uh, by looking at the pictures, you could think, wow, they also, they are, they're not quote unquote dark black. <laughs> but because of the uh, one drop rule passed by the uh, government, you know, like the real stack, you had one drop of black blood, no matter what you look like. Uh, you were considered black. And a lot of people go off, a lot of people uh, of mixed race, uh, of mix, a lot of mixed race people don't look black. In fact, one of the phenomena that occurred in this country, there's a term called passing. And a lot of black folks, a lot of people who by law would be considered black are passing for white because if you don't know their, they don't, you don't know their DNA or bloodline, Uh, hard, he has to do with six-year effort. Uh, a 
a lot of the works are in the uh, Masonic Library in Alva. Uh, thank God for the uh, Grand Master of uh, Masons of Alva back in the late 1800s who had enough foresight to say that it was his intention to, to create the best Masonic Library in America. And uh, he told his man, hey, hey, he, he didn't care about the rules. He wanted all of the proceedings of the black masons in the country as well as the white masons. So thanks to him, a lot of original records, or copies of the original records at the Owl of the out there. Uh, there's another process in masonry where um, the um, we, we have a CCFC, a um, chairman, <laughs> chairman, chairman of the Committee on Foreign Correspondence, whose responsibility it is to communicate with other grand lodges. Uh, whenever a, when we printed our proceedings of what we did for the year, our chairman would send copies or at least write a summary of what we had accomplished for the year and send those summaries to other grand lodges. So we had to go out and uh, look in the records of other grand lodges for CCFC reports. And um, I guess the other thing, uh, my background in as a, Historian. Uh, I went back to school after engineering and got degrees in history and philosophy. But in studying after American history, uh, prior to becoming a Mason, a lot of these people, I knew their place in society and contributions they had made from my background as a historian. I didn't know they were Mason until six, you know, within the last six years. By the way, um, um, I was asked, I volunteered to assist Brother Roundtree. In fact, I was asked to volunteer because of my background as a African American historian. So Brother Roundtree is a researcher and a writer, but wasn't necessarily, what didn't at that time consider himself a historian. So we wanted to add this flavor to the work that would be produced. So I was quite surprised to find that a lot of the people who were already heroes of mine from that, that history were also Prince Hall Masons. And so, you know, so it was kind of like a cross fertilization. My background, plus the Masonic records, my method of research uh, added to Brother Roundtree's method of research. Uh, it was definitely a work of collaboration. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, John T. Costin, um, as an example, uh, was personally responsible for uplifting uh, blacks in Georgia. He left D.C. and was called the quote-unquote carpetbag. But after, after the war, he went to uh, Georgia, traveled all over the uh, state organizing black folks uh, yeah. mm -hmm. for the purpose of uh, organizing them to vote to get some empowerment. Oh man, bro! Meetings, uh, teaching them how to organize yeah, resources. Oh, uh, another gentleman, um, Richard Howard Gleaves, uh, who was a past national uh, Grand Master and from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, went to South Carolina. In fact, he was elected the uh, Lieutenant Governor of South Carolina during the Reconstruction era. He was from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but he came back and settled down and became a member of the uh, Albany in Washington, D.C. But his personal wealth and knowledge uh, helped uplift the, uh, that is again, uplift the uh, brothers in uh, South Carolina. So there was a way that uh, the people, our knowledge and organizing skills, went south to organize in the south the newly free Africans there, right, to help them get their act together. Another thing that people might not know, but both uh, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen of the African Methodist Episcopal Church uh -huh. uh, were both grand masters of uh, masonry in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, they sent uh, riding bishops into the south to organize churches. 
the two elements of what makes a community where the organized men as masons and the church. Did y'all hear what he just said? Hey, bro, I apologize. I hope y'all was able to hear the audio. I apologize. I hope y'all was able to hear the audio, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all heard what he just said, right? Let me get over here. Hey, family, let's make sure we hit the like button, man, and let's make sure we share the video out. Oh, yeah, you man, we not we are not in the algorithm, man, and that's because one of the reasons is, you know, the family ain't sharing the videos, brother. I'm a, uh, uh, yeah, so watch this here. Uh, riding bishops into the South to organize churches. The two elements of what makes a community. The two elements of what makes a community is what? See, because I'm tired of you nigga playing with that. Yeah. The two elements make what? Where they organize men as masons and the church. Whoa. <laughs> Say, man. This nigga Joe for the sale. Yeah, nigga. All right, fuck it. Since y'all want. Look, this is what happened, right? So I had to go get me one of these caviar cones. Y'all know the little infused shit, and they roll it over in the look. And that bitch be, yeah, I got I had to go get that infused shit. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I did just sit down, uh, Joe for the sale. I just got back. You are absolutely correct. I got some shit called Black Mumble. It said grams of infused cannabis and pre-rolled blunt cones, caviar. Smoking on caviar. All right, yeah, god damn it, I did just sit, sit back down. <laughs> oh, what's up, Sylvia? Hold on, god damn, let me ring Sylvia. What is high? What is higher? What is higher learning? He said, amazing. This is not new, just a whole new POV. Um, get your slow means in the building. As the anchor for spiritual development. That's such, right. And again, those ideas flowing from Prince Hall Masonry went to settle and help create the successful uh, communities of blacks. And I don't want to hear nothing. Y'all heard what he said, huh? Listen, man, I keep saying, bro, these niggas out the know. See, you niggas gonna give me my motherfucking say, man. Nigga, I wanted on my tombstone, nigga. I want a 24 karat gold casket, nigga. I wanted on my tombstone, nigga. Best that ever did it and got away with it, goddamn. Now all these niggas can't act like they already knew. But goddamn it, nigga, I told you niggas it was them goddamn. Uh, 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 see, uh, the Macy's, them black European niggas. Listen, bro, we, we, we watch these niggas develop the churches. We watch these niggas sit in these secret societies. We watch these niggas create these, uh, 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 labor movements. The whole play, everything that happened from us came from these niggas, bro. They was the ones sitting there. Cause this is my game right here. If you're going to blame it on a white boy, nigga. Show me what a white boy was 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 because we watched out everything that happened to us. You niggas are the creator of it. See, you come out here on one breath and tell us you the first this, the first this, first this nigga, the first that, and then we say, damn, what well, A, B, and C happened to us, and then we go back to the origin. I say, god damn, man, this, this, man, I know damn well this nigga ain't sitting here and he didn't fucked over us. Nigga sitting out here in front of us. I know this whole ass nigga ain't just. Yeah. Nigga, are you talking about how to build a community? What do you say? Hold on. One more, one more time. One more time. Cause see, when I got here, the Pan African was breaking niggas' jaws with these niggas. And I took them nigga pistol from them. Yeah, they were around here swollen these niggas up with Richard Allen and Absalom Jones. Niggas can't get past it. 1787, they created the free African society. Niggas can't get up out of that. A blue, a blue, a blue, a blue, a blue. Nigga putting them back knuckles, flushing them. Put blood in the nigga mouth with that with that Richard Allen shit. Help them get their act together. Another thing that people might not know, 
but both uh, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen of the African Methodist Episcopal Church uh, were both grand masters of uh, masonry in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, they sent uh, riding bishops into the South to organize churches. The two elements of what makes a community were the organized men as masons and the church as the anchor for spiritual development. Yes, that's right. And again, those ideas flowing from Prince Hall Masonry went to settle and help create the successful uh, communities of blacks in the South following the Civil War. Yes, sir. Right, so being a fellow of Howard Moore, graduating, graduating the 13th, so um, okay. I want to know, well, I was on the other side of the community in Thurfield Hall. So my question is, what impact uh, <laughs> 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 did <laughs> okay, well, um, because of uh, the Grand Lodge being here in 1867, I think, when uh, how it was formed, that the... Um, hold, on, hold 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 on, nigga, don't give it to me. Yeah. I like this guy. I like this guy. <laughs> Hi, what's up, Deanna? Uh, let me rinse you up. Hey, you know what? <laughs> You know what, Deanna? Somebody was somebody came through here the other day talking about they, they were trying to see was you coming. So they said they wanted some tattoos. I told them they're gonna have to take their ass to the goddamn shop if they want some tattoos. Yeah, but uh we did have a guy that asked, was you coming? Cause they wanted to get him and his son some tattoos. He said he wanted to get him and his son, they coming down, they driving down from New York City. And they wanted to know if they can get get some tattoos from you. The listen, those men who created the institution depended on a lot of the the, the brothers in Prince Hall Masonry to help give them away and get them set up. Uh, Doctor uh, Warfield, who set up Howard University's uh, surgery department, was also one of our grand masters, grand master of masons uh, right here in the District of Columbia. Uh, I, I don't have a list of all the professors, but there was always a close relationship between Al Grand Lodge and Minute Howard. In fact, from 1865 until 1925, if you were a African American man in America, the highest social status you could have was being a Mason. Being a Prince Hall Mason. Okay, nigga. Ain't nobody say, man. So y'all need to back up off of these goddamn. <clears throat> so y'all gotta back up off this goddamn uh uh this brother right here. Y'all gotta back up off of them, man. I mean these Masons out here, man. Y'all, y'all like that, y'all talking to see the highest status of a of a of a black man back then, nigga, was a Mason. Indian Carter, let me get it, let me get you up. Well, hey man, now nah, this here, y'all laughing, talking about this still. Y'all know my, my ribs over here fucked up. I really can't be coughing like that. Uh you had uh look, this this shit right here. That nigga, uh uh, who was that? Wildflower. That nigga Wildflower brought me some shit, a caviar cone. It was some little shit. I think, I don't know, I think Cub brought that shit out of Vegas. Blew my motherfucking top back. This shit here is cool. I don't know, this bitch here hit. <laughs> this bitch hit. Say, man. But that nigga Power brought me some shit, bro. Knocked my motherfucking head backwards. That that shit there, this don't taste like that. That other shit, that shit, she had. This shit good, but it don't taste. It got the little, you know, on the outside. What they do, they roll that shit in the little, the little moon rocks and all that shit on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This whole looking like that, all pretty. But that nigga gave me some shit. I never tasted, uh, no smoke like no flower like that before. Uh, nigga, you can't do nothing but like two hits and get up off that bitch, bro. I think that bitch had by like. 
TAC with about 50 in that motherfucker, bro. That bitch was blowing big ass. The reason I put that date in line in there is because 19 from 1904 through 1925. Hey, wait, sec. You said this guy right here been on uh uh Sarnetta channel. You said this guy right here been on Sarnetta. That nigga spit. I like when nigga, you y'all know that nigga ain't got no notes up there, man. That's why I say, bro, don't get caught up in like this era right here. They. Like this era right here, they um, you know, everything is fast, bro. It's it's fast food. I mean, the music, everything. Niggas don't even write their music no more. They freestyle and they shit and nigga, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, like Drake. To me, Drake not a he not a person like his. He had like some hits back in the game. Like you can't play that nigga hits today, and them hoes still hit the same. Some of them, but not all of them. You know what I'm saying? For all them hoes to be going number one like that, everything then you can't play it now because it was just like microwave food. Even back then, you know, after we get out of that season, you really can't even go back and play it. And it's like, it's like a lot of this shit now, like even with the meme scholars, that meme scholarship shit, bro. When niggas ain't going to go put a body of, of, of work together, bro, and come out with a lecture, niggas reinventing the game. When you ain't gotta do too much, niggas come out here and don't 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 really put in too much and can get goat status. Nigga ain't even built up a portfolio. You feel me? And it's just everything now is um it's just the value of shit is gone now. But you see how school standing there, bro, flat footed man, and you know put bars on niggas, talk motherfucker something. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker actually got something out of it. And the nigga ain't, he has some cut on the dope. He has some cut on the dope. But uh, for, I just admire when people go and get the information, bro, and can express that shit. You know what I'm saying? No notes, no nothing. That just be telling me like nigga really be wanting to know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just it's people out there who still for real about this shit. You know, when you love the game, you love the, you know, you, you love the game, bro. And you want their respect, their dignity to stay in there. Listen, this part of the game has always been around. Lecturing and scholarship, and that shit always been around. And I'm gonna tell you. That's always, you know, this was the high priest and all of these. These were the niggas who were, the, yeah, man, these, yeah, yeah, these niggas, you know, or uh, uh, this position is needed, bro. Colonization gonna wipe it out. But everything started off the jab, nigga. This was the jab. Inf information, nigga, what Pac say, whispering while we conversating. Because niggas died over information. Information always been the driving force of this shit. This shit right here can unlock um 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 um, um universes, bro, galaxies, uh infinity uh beyond infinity, nigga. This shit here, uh yeah, man. When you talking about the mind, nah, bro, ain't ain't nothing more powerful, bro, and that connection to the universe. Understanding, you know, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, bro. Ain't ain't nothing never gonna fuck with that. Cause see, a nigga ain't gotta have nothing. And if they if they had that, then they gonna be doing better than the next motherfucker. It's the knowing. It's the development of the soul. It's spiritual growth. Understanding. Overstanding. Understanding, nah, bro, ain't nothing never gonna fuck with it. A jump shot, a motherfucking. Now you know what? Get get the uh, um, what can tap into it too? Music, that music cold, bro. That music cold, man. Say, man, um, that music a motherfucker, boy. That be still go take you through dimensions, nigga.
Yeah, yeah. Like a motherfucker. And music, man, um, gateways. That bitch open up portals, nigga. Talking about the magic. And niggas not even understanding. And these niggas come out here and they talk about the Kabbalah and shit. I don't want to go too far. Because remember, I'm an Indian, nigga. I can only talk about Indian shit. So. But, you know, when we get deeper, bro, and as uh, far as the understanding, what a lot of these niggas understanding, that's why, you know, the most prolific niggas in that time, nigga, the highest status nigga was motherfucking Prince Hall Masonry. This water down there shit today, nigga, any nigga can sign up, nigga, and come pay dues. The door is open. <laughs> yeah. I got uncles who, uh, now they not my real uncles, but they older niggas from my hood, and they my uncle homeboy. And I grew up with them niggas all my life. Is my uncles. That's how they always took care of me, as, as, as they nephew. But they masons. I ain't never had a conversation with the niggas about that shit. I don't know how to have a conversation. <laughs> I'm keep you But I knew these niggas all my life, nigga. And I'm just now finding out these niggas Masons. I ain't talking about no little bitty Mason, nigga. In that capacity, because you know you got different, you know. But I didn't know that. You know, these niggas ran the streets, bro. You know what I'm saying? See, one of them um, came home off a of murder case, nigga. He real, real nigga, respected. Goddamn right, nigga, reputable. I, I, you know, one day I had a conversation with him, like, how did y'all get into it? But I'm, you know, to be honest, I think it was like family ties. I think. Niggas went a different way than the family. Caught in these streets, and when they came back, you know, they followed in the, you know. I don't know, bro. I don't know how to have that conversation. I might ask my uncle and just tell him not to say nothing, but I know him. He gonna, he gonna get him in there. Hey, this nigga, you know, y'all know how niggas be doing you. Say man, get called nigga. Hey man, this nigga talking about this Mason shit. How y'all nigga? You know what I'm saying? They gonna put it on the spot. So I, I might say something, bro. But you know what? I just always uh I respected it when I found out. And uh, cause I seen them so I seen a picture of them niggas suited and booted. Heads and toe. I'm talking about both of them. I was like, whoa, nigga. What the fuck going on here? <laughs> Say, cuz these niggas were creeping everything, nigga, real niggas. And then I turn around, I see these niggas. I, I say, I'm talking about draped up and dripped that. Nigga even got on the socks. Say, man, nigga, that bitch on the, on the got it. Nigga even got the socks on, man. I said, God damn. I, I just never said nothing. I don't know, man. That nigga say the highest status was in masonry, but I I I, I really I, the question I really want to ask some niggas is because watch this here. Y'all know these niggas that grew up in the church. Them mostly the niggas that become masons. Y'all ever notice that most niggas that come up in the church, they go off to HBCU schools. Look at these niggas in here looking around. How this nigga know my life? Ah! <laughs> yeah, you niggas come about the church, nigga. And all your life, nigga, you know where HBCU you was going to. You already knew where HBCU you was going to, nigga. Guess what, nigga? My family. It's HBCUs here, nigga. My people now. I was raised in Texas Southern University, nigga. I was raised, nigga, 
in Texas Southern University. My aunt and them used to babysit me. She used to fake like I was her baby. They was twins. It was two sets of twins. They was going to TSU. Raised me in the running around in the dorm room. They was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, them ladies used to be sneaking and kissing on me and saying I was they, yeah. Precious. Ah, shout out to the Texas Southern Tigers, man. Oh, um, yeah, like a motherfucker. And my other side of the family, most of my cousins and them and stuff over there, they win the preview. My my family, the land has been there for 190 years. That's where all of them went from out there. The ones that came up in, in Brenham, uh, the ones that came up in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They went to, uh, um, um, Texas, uh, the Aggies, Texas A&M. They went down there to Texas A&M. Yep. Five is the period of the creation of the uh, Greek fraternities on college campuses. And over time, even though each one of them used our procedures and our handbooks to create their organizations as such, right? Uh, as one became educated through time in the minds of some people, being a Greek in a Greek fraternity was a higher status than being a Mason. But about, I'll say from 1920 to 19, mm -hmm. until 2016, or until today, one of the most reverent statements that you can make is that you're a double brother. Now, double brother is a Mason and a Omega, or Mason and an Alpha, or an Omega, a Mason and a K. Chill out, school. You getting up too much game, bro. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. You getting up too much game, man. Say, y'all, this young nigga is spitting. Say, man. Say, man, this young nigga is spitting. Cause Julie, what do you say? Double up three, four times, nigga. You ain't telling no lies. We trying to <laughs> what Nip say, trying to double up. Look at Indian Carter, he like this shit. <laughs> Used our procedures and our handbooks to create their organizations as such, right? Uh, as one became educated through time in the minds of some people, being a Greek in a Greek fraternity was a higher status than being a Mason. But about, I'll say from 1920 to 19, until 2016, or until today, one of the most reverent statements that you can make is that you're a double brother. Now, double brothers are Mason and a Omega, or Mason and an Alpha, or an Omega, a Mason and a Kappa, or what have you. But double brothers, so <laughs> you know, like it's it's we created them. They they've come back and we've joined. So we both have the the fraternal the, the college fraternal order and Prince Hall Masonry all have the same goals for our communities. That's up the and moving <coughs> forward. You hear me? Hold on, bro, because I caught something that I really, I don't know if he was talking too fast. Until 1925, if you were a... Okay. So, uh, I want to know, well, I was on the other side of the street in Thurfield Hall. So my question is, what impact did the uh, uh, Mason Fraternity have on the professors at Howard University, especially with Oswald Professor Franklin? Junior, you say it's in the league. Oh, okay, well, um, because of... Uh, the Grand Lodge being here in 1867, I think, when uh, how it was formed, that the um, the the those men who no 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 look at Sylvia. <laughs> Why wish you could hit this motherfucker, Sylvia? I know you be on that good game, goddamn. We gonna put something in there. I got to smoke with uh Sue. Say uh, she pulled out a motherfucking um. Uh, Y'all know them old schools they used to smoke in the twenties. Remember them ladies used to smoke smoke the cigarettes? 
She pulled out a gold motherfucker like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Corella DeVille had on 101 Dalmatians. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sue said pull out that motherfucker uh, like Corella DeVille had on 101 Dalmatians. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna put some, we gonna, we gonna, we gonna turn up. Ha, <laughs> she say she fancy, huh? Oh, you fancy, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, I called her a madam. She ain't like, she said, I don't think I like that. <laughs> I said, that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing, God damn it. Maybe I should have just told it was fancy. Fuck it. But check this out, right? This what uh this is the point that I was saying, hey y'all, check him out. So he was talking about Howard University. But check him out how he gonna go into the uh, the fraternities as well created the institution depended on a lot of the 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 brothers in Prince Hall Masonry to help give them a way and get them set up. Uh, Doctor uh, Warfield, who set up Howard University's uh, surgery department, was also one of our grand masters, grand master of masons uh, here in the District of Columbia. Uh, I, I don't have a list of all the professors, but there was always a close relationship between Al Grand Lodge and Minute Howard. In fact, from 1865 until 1925, if you were a African American man in America, the highest social status you could have was being a Mason, being a Prince Hall Mason. The reason I put that date in line in there is because from 1904 through 1925 is the period of the creation of the uh, Greek fraternities on college campuses. And over time, even though each one of them used our procedures and our handbooks to create their organizations as such, right? Uh, as one became educated through time in the minds of some people being a Greek in a Greek fraternity was a higher status than being a Mason. But about, I'll say from 1920 to 19, until 2016, or until today, one of the most rare statements that you can make is that you're a double brother. Now, double brother is a Mason and a Omega, or Mason and a Alpha, or an Omega, a Mason and a Kappa, or what have you, but double brothers. So, you know, like it's, it's, we created them, they, they've come back and we've joined. So we both have the, the fraternity, the, the college fraternal order and Prince Hall Masonry all have the same goals for our communities as upliftment and moving forward. Yes, that's the last, all right, uh, last question. Yes, sir. Okay, well. Um, I'll put it this way is the, um, when, when the Masons of, of, uh, the revolutionary period designed the, uh, documents, uh, which are the foundation of this country. Um, in fact, there were 13 of the 39 men who created the constitution were Masons. Uh, the first country in the world to have a constitution is the United States and the idea if, came from the fact that masonry was run by Anderson's constitution and many of the elements in the U S constitution duplicate what's in Anderson's constitution. And where the constitution come from you Indian niggas. Come on, man, with the bullshit. This shit got you nigga crime scene got you Indian nigga fingerprints all over the motherfucker. But a goddamn white European in there with the case. I'm trying to figure out why I got a goddamn white boy sitting back here in the electric chair. We come work the crime scene. Ain't nothing but you niggas fingerprints on the motherfucking scene. But the um, what we call America's original sin, uh, not just slavery, but the discrimination that slavery caused. Uh, though our tenants say that uh, in the country that all men are created equal. 
the government didn't practice that. And though Freemasonry is a is an organization itself which states that all men are brothers, we don't we only deal with each other based on what's in our hearts. In those days, Masonry didn't do that. So there was discrimination. There were whites who wouldn't who didn't allow their interaction. Uh, my co-author wrote a. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't even think I want to just let that just go by. I want you niggas to feel it, cause I be hearing all that anti-Mason talk you niggas be talking. What if y'all was trying to trick me? <laughs> See. Somebody put this white boy out here. Somebody, man, we know this nigga ain't buy shit. We know goddamn well. The nigga couldn't, I mean, come on, bro. I mean, the shit that got done, bro, this gonna take an awesome nigga to do this shit. You gotta look at the odds this nigga gotta defy, nigga. You got, I'm talking about, you gotta look at the mounts this nigga gotta climb. Ain't no listen, man. Nigga, you gotta go get a terrific ass nigga to come do um do this. Nah, hell nah, man. White boy can't white man can't even jump. They can't even dunk a basketball, bro. Nigga ain't even got no dick game on him. Nigga can't dance. Nigga ain't got no jokes. First thing in your head is I knock your <laughs> man high in the hill. And all I can hear is Marcus Garvey. All I can hear is Sarah Sutton City. Ah! Banging on that beast. Boy, y'all niggas. Stood out. Farrakhan. Old Farrakhan. Before he went Christian. <laughs> Man, go on, on bro. We're not here to talk about no Boston. Chicago connections, man. You know, I was in Chicago. The Moors was in Chicago. Black Power, Black Black Panthers in Chicago. Everybody. Uh, toasting at the at the Masonic Hall. <laughs> Boy, y'all nigga wrong, bro. Y'all wrong in the motherfucker, man. Check me out. Now, y'all remember old Chicago, huh? How Chicago used to look back in the game. Y'all see them pictures in the 1800s and shit. Shit was beautiful, wasn't it? Man, you know, even the Native Americans, that shit these niggas run around here, because y'all know that when they, these revolutionary um, plays that came through, one of the things that that they were doing, you got to listen to for what the niggas are asking for, right, when these revolutions come. The messages, what they what they saying they asking for. You had the Native Americans, how they put that on, they came and said they wanted. You know where that shit came out from? Chicago. That Rockefeller money, boy. Ooh, them niggas had a bag on them, man. Niggas had a bag. They took the show on the road. Get where they went. Chicago. 
And from there, nigga, they burnt what will become that line that's going to come here, but you're going to have two competing. It always was two. Because a lot of niggas went getting their money from over there. They went to the white Hebrew Israelites and got their bag. But see, that white, that, that philanthropy money, and you got to understand who was more invested in niggas. Yeah, you had these people because, like I say, these philanthropist niggas, your Peabody's, your your Astros, all of these niggas can, was was niggas first. The whole play of everybody going white, that's why they started flipping white on you niggas. These nigga bloodlines go back to niggas. Show you nigga how to run a play, nigga. You talking about a play? Man, that went all over niggas' head. Man, that shit went all over niggas' head, man. I know I'm gonna have to bring that. I'm gonna have to bring something back, bro, to show niggas. We're gonna have to run it back. Show you how cold a play is, bro. And one of the, I'm, I'm gonna go get one of the coldest niggas to ever do this shit. When he died, that nigga had more money than 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 every nigga that was in the game at that time. When nobody fucking with that nigga, he had more property, more land. He didn't raked up. Man, that nigga there carved out. That nigga had coal mines, gold mines, and and everything else. But that nigga helped flip the Great Migration. Everybody that was coming through the Great Migration from the South, he was getting them housing up in the North. And guess what? He was. They was doing. They was trading him. They land. He'll get them land up in the North, and they'll get him. They form down south. Yeah, you talking about? I'm talking about one of the baddest niggas to ever do this shit. Bad motherfucker. Nigga passed as a white boy sometimes. When as a nigga sometimes. His grandson created the boule. I'm just I'm just trying to tell you how, how bad of a motherfucker this nigga is. Niggas around here talking about they can um Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> this nigga right here, uh, that nigga grandson created the boo hey, nigga. They it's bloodline. Some niggas on some fake shit, some niggas on some real shit. This was a good bill right here, though. I can't believe old school was on side of the channel. I'm going to have to check that out. Hey, Big Sex, send me this shit. I want to go check him out. Even though each one of them used our procedures and our handbooks to create their organizations as such, right? Or until today. One of the most reverent statements that you can make is that you're a double brother. Now, double brothers are Mason and a Omega, or Mason and a Alpha, or an Omega, a Mason and a Kappa, or what have you. But double brothers, so <laughs> you know, like it's it's we created them; they they've come back and we've joined. So we both have the the fraternity, the, the college fraternal order, and Prince Hall Masonry all have the same goals for our communities. It's uplifting and moving forward. You heard that? Yeah, 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 yeah. They got the same goal, nigga. So guess what you gonna have, nigga? Because they gonna send you through the church. Then we're gonna go through the school program. Then we're gonna go out to the HBCU. We're gonna pledge. And we're gonna... Come Mason. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'll say this here. Some people fear what they don't understand. So maybe a lot of people don't have a real understanding on what it actually is, what it stands for. Um, there are um, those out there who say that it actually was a good thing and it was founded by our people in a good way and it was 
corrupted. Some people can say that. Uh, some people can say that, you know, it was used to, you know, create a powerful, uh, to, to, to execute a powerful agenda, man. Um, I mean, whatever it was, I'm not going to get my opinion, but whatever it was, right? That motherfucker worked. That bitch worked. <laughs> Niggas out here fucked up today, bro. This niggas work. What did they? What did they be some whole ass niggas or some real niggas in your book? However it worked, but that shit worked. And uh, but anybody can do it, bro. Um, this shit watered down here now, though. Watch this here, nigga. Check this out here. Just day before yesterday. I'm scrolling on social media and one of my homeboys, bro, I've been knowing this nigga for a long time. I said, probably like two guys, and he said, he had on the Shriners hat. He from St. Louis. He had on the Shriners hat. Fuck me up. I stared at the picture. I ain't know. Shit, how many niggas, man? You don't, you don't know. You know how many motherfuckers? I'm like, damn, I've been around this nigga here for a long time. I never knew that shit. Did a nigga just get down with some shit or is it bloodline? That's what I be wanting to know. Is it bloodline? Yeah, what is the family story on that shit? Yes. That's the last all right, uh, last question. Yes, sir. Okay, well, um, I'll put it this way: is the um, when, when the Masons of of uh, the Revolutionary Period designed the uh, documents, uh, which are the foundation of this country. Um, in fact, there were thirteen of the thirty-nine men who created the Constitution were Masons. Uh, the first country in the world to have a Constitution is the United States. And the idea came from the fact that masonry was run by Anderson's constitution. And many of the elements in the US constitution duplicate what's in Anderson's constitution. That's the part I wanted. For the people who just coming in, I want y'all to listen to this. For one thing BCU gonna do, we gonna beat that colonization about you. You know, nigga, fuck, man, that white supremacy shit, that shit sound cool. All these hoes practicing the form of it, yeah, that. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't even say that now. Because, see, white supremacy means all niggas suffer from the, you feel me? And that's not the case. So, I don't know if you can call it white supremacy. You feel me? White supremacy don't exist, bro. Because right now, today, the shit that's happened to you, you can say you're a white man, but it's niggas doing it too. Your vice president, a nigga. The last president for the last eight years was a nigga. Him and his wife and kids. Shit crazy, bro. It ain't no white supremacy, bro. What the hell is wrong with niggas in 2022? It ain't never been no white supremacy. It always been a nigga working side by side with these hoes. You had black presidents all the way through the 20th century, all the way up to the 20th century. Niggas was presidents. I, they told you they was a white boy. Come on, man. This shit crazy. Nigga tell you anything. And if you just now hearing shit now, Cause then you come back in the 20th century, bro. Like when did they start changing? I might come out here and do that. I got I got I started on a new lecture last night. I need to chill, but I think it's good. Uh I just had some shit on my mind, so I started putting it down. But I got like 11 slides on it. I had just start working. 
some shit that was on my mind I wanted to talk about. But let's walk. Masons. Uh, the first country in the world to have a constitution is the United States. And the idea came from the fact that masonry was run by Anderson's constitution. And many of the elements in the U.S. Constitution duplicate what's in Anderson's Constitution. But the um, what we call America's original sin, uh, not just slavery, but the discrimination that slavery caused. Uh, though our tenants say that uh, in the country that all men are created equal, the government didn't practice that. And though Freemasonry is a is an organization itself, which states that all men are brothers, so we don't we only deal with each other based on what's in our hearts. In those days, Masonry didn't do that. So there was discrimination. There were whites who wouldn't who didn't allow their interaction. Uh, my co-author wrote a uh, piece several years ago called <laughs> Two Faces: One Public and One Private." Hey, let me ask you a question, bro. Cause I know you, it, it get a little, 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 little tricky. What's up with it? It'll turn up one time. Get a little tricky, right? Because they always tell you, you know, the white masons, niggas got it from the white masons, right? Somebody asked this question. So was Prince Hall the the highest form? I don't know if I want to wait till you know my lecture to say this, but I say this part. I say this part. Um, what was the difference between the Prince High and um, what they was calling the white, the white Masons, who he said didn't want to let them practice? I think that's something that I want to focus on because is there a difference between Prince High fucking right? It's a difference. Is it something unique about it? You got damn right. Do it got something to do with Indian shit? Got a lot of shit to do with Indian shit. Everything to do with some Indian shit. We going ah, what? Come on, bro. The writing is, is clear. It's right there on the wall. Why are they separating it? What's different about it? And then you look up and all you niggas end up in it. All your granddaddies and shit end up. Come on, man. Ask me no shit that question like that, nigga. Your granddaddy and them um coach still hanging up in Big Mama in the room back there. He's sneaking off on y'all niggas ass after he go over there with his other family. He's stopping by the lodge. Ain't you an Indian? If you an Indian, nigga, <laughs> granddaddy was an Indian, nigga. Why all you Indian niggas end up in some Prince Howard shit? Why y'all like that kind better than the other kind? Y'all like that one better than the other kind, don't you? How y'all niggas end up in it? And which was, which, which, what was pointed out is that there have always been white Masons who work with and help black Masons move forward. Let's clean that part up too. Who the white Masons they talking about? The Europeans. They ain't talking about no white boys. See, you had an old way and you had a new way. It was a time, I always tell y'all, where, where the reset happened and then everything flipped. And when it was flipping, what came out? Of, what came after that flip? This, um, this masonry, everything about uh this U.S. this U.S. shit. Who put all that shit together? These niggas. They had already had a form, but you had niggas about to leave and break off and go do their own thing. They took everything with them. The sciences, everything. They took it with them. And you know, niggas can be mad at me, but the more and more I read the story, I'll be like, I, cause I just be trying, I be just pitching myself like there in that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
whatever happened, it was a group of niggas who sat down and agreed on coming together, bro, and putting a plate uh, in motion. And it worked for them, bro. You see them start out small. Them niggas had small armies, bro. That shit went that many of them niggas, bro. It went that many. And see what brought them together through networking. It was networking. See, they didn't come together in the beginning. It was networking. You had all the competition. You had all the bullshit. You had all this shit there going. And shit started coming together. And then they got put in a situation where they had to come together. And they ran their move, man. They went for their move. And, and she, that she, she worked. Regular niggas, bro, they even went nothing spectacular about these niggas. First out, these little niggas ain't nothing but 20, 21 years old. That's the first thing I want to point out. A 20, 21 year old white boy ain't shit. Come on, man. Nigga ain't figured out shit. 20, 21 year old nigga, though. An Indian? Shit. That nigga been grown. Yeah, that nigga know more than a nigga that's 80 years old. If you let him tell it. But far as what niggas ambition and drive and man say. Um, these little niggas though, my point to it. Yeah, so nah, hell nah, man. And guess what? The niggas who they was going to go get was young niggas. And so when you look up at the United States and today, who they always trying to get, they trying to go, they always trying to go get the young niggas. They got them running around the court and all this shit. Tell them NCAA, they win it. They win it, sold all this shit up, getting all of that money, working these young niggas. Send that right out to the army. My old man went to the army. He was 20 years old. Same age as them niggas who putting together the United States. Like a motherfucker, bro. These niggas ain't did nothing spectacular, man. All they did was goddamn um came together, um, created a plan, bro, and and, and was for real. <laughs> you feel me? That just that what happened is just results of what when you for real. Niggas was for real on both sides. But nigga went for their move, bro, and they had more, you know, it came out on top. Now, the part with the trickery and, you know, somebody coming writing over the story, well, we know that happened. When did that start happening? In the 20th century, when they created this new reality for niggas. Did the Masons have something to do with it? But at the same time, there have always been white Masons who did everything they could to prevent us from moving anywhere and who denied our legitimacy as such, right? So that's internal politics. So in America, as opposed to anywhere else in the world, uh, what's called Prince Hall Freemasonry is uh, talked about as Black Freemasonry or African-American Freemasonry. But the truth of the matter is both groups practice the exact same thing. Both groups do. But again, the legacy of racism and discrimination uh, uh, has is still with us. There are of the 50 states in the country, there are eight Grand Lodge of white Masons, primarily in the South, who don't recognize black Freemasonry as a legitimate fraternal organization. Therefore, when we talk, we have to talk about white Masonry and black Masonry when we bring up those circumstances. OK, well, thank you very much. Appreciate you, Sco. Good shit.
All right, hey, this is Rod Hayes and Dane Calloway. Uh, I ain't know them niggas did a bill together. I wouldn't say a bill, but. In dealing with history in general and on top of what happened with us as people, the indigenous people of the Americas. Because the indigenous people of the Americas, the story doesn't start in 1492. That's number one. The American government starts in 1776. And it wasn't that long ago. We look at that. Our history stretches longer than both. What you're referring to in 1492 is a foreigner's arrival. And them not knowing about this land. They landed here. Foreigners land. Let, let's not even mention Christopher Columbus. It says foreigners. 1492. And okay, so that was me listening to Dane Calloway earlier. Um after uh, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get my, my thoughts coherent on the last video in the sound cut out at the end. But it turns out I was hungry and I didn't know it. That's right, free Larry Hoover in this motherfucker. Hey, look at our family. Hey, let's get to 100 likes. <coughs> hey, let's, let's get to 100 likes, family. So um, the questions that I'm getting is why Larry Hoover? Out of everybody that's in the leadership in our community, why Larry Hoover? It's real simple. Larry Hoover is my, the chief of my clan, the, the clan of the, so the captain was subject to the navigator, the navigator name on the ship. But Larry Hoover is my, the chief of my clan, the the clan of the black gangster disciple nation is also in alliance with other tribal nations on the land. This our shit. We just heard Dane Calloway talking about our condition um, and when this shit started around 1492. And he said, fuck talking about Columbus. Columbus is the code. And Colombo is the key. The, Columbus was the investigator. In Colombo, the TV show is the keys to what the fuck he was doing. So Columbus was the investigator and he was taking instruction from a navigator. The navigator was the most powerful person on the ship. But they tell you that it was a captain of the ship. That's the person running the ship now. If you understand military, you know that in order to have a captain, the captain have to be subject to the person that granted him the title called captain. So the captain was subject to the navigator. The navigator name on Columbus's ship was Pietro del Negro, when they translate as Peter the Black. Now, <clears throat> remember, we need to get a message to Dane Calloway that he need to talk about the indigenous ancestry of King Hoover for the people. He is our national, which include all of the federations of tribes, greed. That's why he's so harsh when he be talking to them people because they give him so much shit. And he right, been right, gonna be right. We was already here. We didn't come on ships. So we as a people, um, have no centralized focus for our power so we can harness it and we can use it and we can exercise our galactic right to call in our elders from the stars to come in and clean this motherfucker up. Now, <clears throat> earlier I was explaining on the receipts why they wasn't coming in like the movie... Um, Independence Day with Will Smith and just blast the White House. The government has capitulated, but the people haven't waken up. This is why you haven't seen worse than the storms and the earthquakes. Now, <clears throat> this is, the magic of our people is concealed in our dances. And right now, if you want to unleash the animals, you have to have the children do the dance called the Hokey Pokey and tell them that they're doing it to clean up Mother Earth.
Shout out to the homie Eric Watkins, goddamn. With a three from the top of the key. Appreciate that love. We don't get too much love over here, family. Uh, so appreciate that love. Hey, Tiffany, what part of Texas are you from, Tiffany? Tiffany, baby, what part of uh, Texas are you from, huh? We want to clean the earth of anything that don't belong here. And when the kids do the dance called the hokey pokey, Time out, bro. What the hell is going on? I know I'm on this good weed. I know I'm on this, this, this Zaza. Say, man. Say, man, they done gave me this shit in the cone, man. They done rolled it around and some shit, man. Yeah, 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 man. They, they done rolled it around, man. They got me smoking some, you know, this shit, some avian shit. Shit they got from Mars. Nigga brought this shit back from Mars from me. But I know goddamn well you ain't sitting there about do the hanky panky, nigga. Turn yourself around and Throw your hands in there. I know goddamn well, nigga. What is that? I might, maybe I need to rewind this, nigga. I'm trying to figure out. Because, nigga, I thought Dane Calloway and Rod Hayes, nigga, was going to do like Jane Time 16, 19, Christopher Columbus Bill type of shit. I'm trying to figure out what the hell, how this Humpty Dumpty end up. What? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how the hell Humpty Dumpty ended up in 1492. <laughs> Y'all niggas still that. I'm on this good dope, too. Hell no. Nah. I'm on this good dope, too. Let me make sure I ain't tripping. It is a conjure that's been taught to us for many years so we would know at this time how to use it. And this is why that Pied Piper reference is so fearful to him. Because the person that can put the puzzle together can tell you what your magic is and then we can run these motherfuckers out of here without pulling a single bullet. You don't have to call to nobody if you don't want to. It's not about um, getting the government to do anything because the government is already not here no more. Y'all just following the stage show that your enemy have in play because they don't believe that we gonna ever come together under no circumstances behind no one motherfucker <clears throat> especially after they dirty up his name, dirty up the name of his people, like they did Malik Angel Bay, like they did Dick Tukey, like they did T. Rogers, and the list goes on. So let me explain a little bit again about how we got here. I want to do a long, drawn-out discourse on it because I got a three-part series on that on my Facebook page for those who want to double back. Just um, put in how did we get here and then it'll pop up. Or you could put in one of them is how did we get here? We was never, slavery never existed. Uh, another one is exactly what is a satanic Jew. So I'm going to go over a little bit of what's going on so y'all can get it. The people that came over here darker than me, but they called themselves the white man because they're the attackers in the Kandra Wars. If you go back to your history of ancient Egypt, you'll find that that's the home of chess. Well, chess was created by somebody called Thoth, and it was brought to the, to the 3D world based off a fifth dimensional game of the gods, where they play all, every board game you can think of is one of the games in the game of the gods. They gave it to us in board games so we can learn it, so somebody can come along and figure it out and tell us what the fuck it is. That's a post I did on my page. If you look up the word Plutarchy, go to on Facebook, then you go to post and then now Tiffany, I know who you is. Uh I did. I, I remember you from there. I seen you um yeah, I seen you around there. I don't I don't think we chopped it up though, but uh I I, I know who you is uh then you go re refine posts and you type my name in under who. It's a Plutarchy post that pulls up the, this is a game of life, just like Monopoly. But the Plutarchy is the global, it's actually the takeover of everything from the central sun, what we call our sun, to Pluto. That's why it's a plutocracy. Pluto is supposed to be the furthest planet from the sun. So everything from Pluto to the sun was at stake in this conjure war which draw the Galactic Federation in. But the, the wager on the war was everything in that versus us. 
we would become a perpetual slave if they win the war. They lost. They put us, the, the Kanja war is predicated up on what they call the schizophrenic mind of a guy. In other words, I got one in there called um, uh, uh, a guy with dementia and is talking about m regaining the mind. So you automatically know where everything go when you're born. They have to scramble your worldview so that you don't know where none of it go no more. And none of them could figure it out. Well, nobody would never give me the okay over all of the lifetimes that we've been going through this shit for the last, what we were considering linear time, 2,000 years. They wouldn't let me play in the game. They wouldn't let me take the shot at the title. They, ain't that, they didn't want me doing it because I'm going to make every motherfucker from the king to the peasant and everybody in the middle bump straight. Nah, nah, nah. He don't. Uh, he don't have a channel. I think he just got a Facebook. I, I don't know it though. So if somebody out there know how to find Rob, I don't know how to find the nigga. I want to do a show with him though. Yeah, I want to do a show with him though. Um, hey, look, check it out, man. Um, man, my homegirl went to. Sedona, Arizona. Bro, I ain't know that place was that beautiful, man. Sedona, Arizona. I'm kind of disappointed now. You know, I wanted to see Monte Zuma, but I, I really wanted to see it. But y'all, them niggas that keep pulling their suits. You know, we want to show these niggas, man, let's go out there to the sources, bro. Let's come, let's go become the source. You feel me? Let's, let's go become the source. But this goddamn Sedona, Arizona, bro. What the hell them folks had going on up there? Hold on, bro. Let me pull this shit up. What the hell? Y'all know they got a Sedona on Mars, huh? Yeah, man, I ain't know that. I didn't know they had all this going on out there. Boy, they out there hiding it out there in the desert. That's why they don't want too many niggas out there. They be telling me, ooh, it's too hot out there. They already got you niggas drinking that nasty water. Ooh, that water. Ooh, that water, boy. I'm scared of that water. I know y'all be thirsty, though, boy. Boy, I say. Say, man. Okay, what we got here? Hold on, y'all. Let me find it. See these pictures trash, man. My homie had a video. She just filmed it live. Hold on, hold on. Say, bro, that West Coast different. Man, let me tell you East Coast niggas something, man. That West Coast different, fam. Man, that West Coast different. Hold on, y'all. Let's get into this. Man, shout out to the homie, uh, Spody Boy, man. Shout out to the homie, Spody Boy, man. He represent goddamn that, uh, 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 Florida. He coming out the Florida car, goddamn. Shout out to the homie, Spody, man. Spody gonna be out there in the, in the A. He popping out with us. That part. Man, let's get this Sedona up, bro. That video, man, it's hard in, in person. And uh, she got a resident. Um, I can't think of what tribe that they from. I think Navajo. Navajo, bro. And and when you see her, niggas that call her uh, uh, African-American or uh, black. Niggas straight Navajo Indian. She out of Vegas. Man, they got there in Sedona, bro. That shit there look amazing. You 
you know. Um, hold on, let me let me show y'all this shit. Let me get a better picture. What we doing with it? I right, let me share my screen. All right, bro, y'all ain't tell me Sedona look like this here, man. Look at this shit. Yeah, I'm trying to see what they had going on at the top up there, bro. Like from the ground level, bro. That shit's just so high. And it look like it's so high up in the sky, bro. I'm trying to see, do they can you go up there? Is it a way you can go up there or something? Man, you go to that west coast, that west coast different, bro. See yeah, we come from down here, man, where all these trees at, man. Ain't nothing but trees around this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Um, rich soil, shit like that. Good agriculture, man. Then we got the streams and all of that shit that are going through there. Niggas don't even understand. All the people made a lot of them hoes, bro. Nigga was building them hoes back then, bro. That's how nigga kept the food. That's how growing up in the South, you got the food growing in the goddamn backyard. Crawfish hoes and shit like that. Nigga grew up. Crawfish hoes, nigga. Niggas grow crawfish hoes in the ditch. That's back then when they built homes with ditches in them. They don't even do that shit no more. But when they was building them hoes with the ditches in them back in the game, nigga, uh, nigga, nigga, nigga had crawfish hoes grow right there in your ditch. Yeah, that West Coast hard, man. I want to look, look at that shit. Y'all see that in the background, bro? They say this where the gods. This is the land of the gods. I'm gonna tell you something, bro. Uh, bro, we gotta go to this shit, fam. Y'all want to? I mean, I I I want to see it for myself, man. We gotta go out there and see this BCU. Real talk. These other niggas don't want to do nothing but talk. We we gonna go out here and see it. We going. We pulling up. They didn't pull the bikes out. They go to leak to leak and bring the uh, electric scooters out on some, on some shit like this. Look at that shit in the background, bro. Look how that shit look. That West Coast different, man. That shit hit different. It's different, bro. When I was on the road out there, man, um, going OTR, man. See, like, I've been to Utah. Like, they be talking about Utah and all of that. Like, I seen that shit. I seen the Dakotas. Cowboy territory, man, coming across the plains and shit. Like, I felt it. I, I felt it. You know what I'm saying? I hit the mountains in Arizona, man. That was the back ways, man. Them Indians come up out of there, man. Shout out to them shock ties, man. Motherfucking Chickasaw and Creek Indians. Cherokees coming out of Arizona, man. I mean, coming out of Arkansas. Osage coming out of Arkansas, man. Man, we got to pull up. And y'all know we're going to get pseudo on you niggas real quick. But is a region, Cladonia is a region on the um, planet Mars that has attracted both scientific and popular interest. The name originally referred to a double feature distinctly colored um, area that is visible from Earth Mound telescopes. The area borders the plains. Let me go down to my. 
the name. Hold on. From Antiquity Greek. Cridonia contains the face on Mars. All right, here go a better pigeon. We're going to get sued on you niggas right quick. What a conspiracy theory niggas at? What y'all got on this? What a conspiracy. We finna go sued up real quick. 18 images of Cridonia region were taken by the orbiters of each of which seven have resolutions better than 250 pixels. More than 20 years after the Viking one image it was taken, they visited Mars and made new observations of Cladonia region. And this is what they came up with. So they say this is the sister city to that's on Mars. And they say this is the sister to Sidonia right here in Arizona. What y'all think? Man, go on, on um, Joe 47. He say that nigga Root say that the Moors came from Mars. Lord have mercy. Blessed be thy name in the heavenly father. The Holy Ghost. The Moors come from Mars, nigga. Hold on. What time it is? <laughs> say the Moors say that in his defense, not all Moors, but you know. Tree, that nigga somewhere smoking crack rock. We hear you think it. Stealing radio, breaking in cars and shit. Getting locked up for the weekend and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know that nigga still to the same old. They got 12 trespassing cases. You know how that nigga do it. Hey, if you still in Mexico or you came back? Hey, if you in Mexico or you came back to reality? <laughs> you came back to reality yet? Every time I go, every time I go somewhere, I had this little feeling, right? I was on a plane one time. And uh, this couple, they was trying to sit by each other. You know, they ain't by their seats or whatever. So they was trying to sit by each other. So they was asking people, hey, do you mind if we do? And uh, this guy, he was going to give up his seat. And the husband, like, shook his head, like, nah. So the wife was asking people, can I? The husband shook his head, nah. Some cold shit, huh? He ain't want to sit by. It. He was hoping they ain't put them by each other. And he and he brought his hat down, you know, white boy style. You know, when you palm that, when he, when you palm the whole head, the back of the head, and you come and you come forward with it, that's how he put his hat on. Slap that bitch on the back, and then come come bring it to the front. And he said, <sighs> "Back to reality." 
And every time I just be hitting that, <laughs> I be like, <laughs> back to reality. <laughs> Why, well, if I fell down with that nigga, <laughs> back to real life like a motherfucker, nigga. That son hit different, nigga. Yeah, buddy. She said they cut down the gigantic trees. That's what the mountaintops are. Those are from big trees. The the uh the mounds, I think somebody sent me something like that, huh? I can't remember. I think I, I don't know. It was somebody on um at the trap the other day that was saying something like that about some trees or something. Well, if they cut them off, where the hell them all fell to? <laughs> what they feeling? This is a big motherfucker. What a motherfucker, boy. That bitch, that gonna kill a lot of niggas. I wonder where that bitch failed. Man, we put this candy down, man. I need to go give me some real food. I'm sitting there eating candy. Man, he say, trees made of gems. Shit, I call fruit gems. Fruit will be gems. Yeah, yeah, vegetation, life, nigga, that's gems. Some real gems for your ass. Nah, the tree of life, nigga. What? Um, I seen earlier deal. Deals brought up Moab. I think we should go. I think we should pull up on Moab. I think we can do that next year. Hey, um, if if we do a trip out there, see, we need to get all these um, cause we we gonna we gonna go put us a, 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 a um, we gonna go check out all these places these niggas be talking about. I wouldn't mind pulling up on them. Is is they um is is weed legal in Utah? Do they have dispensaries in Utah? All right, appreciate you, sister Ron. I'm 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 definitely gonna check it out. I've been hearing too many people talk about uh these big trees. Yeah, I want to check it out. Because, I mean, you look up there, it's like, first thing, you like, did somebody live there? And if ain't nobody live there, then what the, you know, like, what the hell was that used for? Like, why would that look like that? What's up with it, OG? All right, man, I'm finna get my ass up out of here, man. Uh, I'm finna make a move. But y'all be cool like y'all be cool, man. Uh, I'm definitely gonna check that that, uh, that joint out. Hey, y'all, um, if y'all are coming to uh, Atlanta, we're closing registry 
Sunday. Sunday is the last day. Sunday is the last day. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, y'all, before we leave. Hold on for y'all leave. We're gonna do this. Cause I might stay. Let me send this text. Um Sunday, family, if you're coming to Atlanta with us, all right. If you are coming to Atlanta with us, make sure that you register. Can somebody drop the link down there, the registration link? Can you um make sure that you register over on B on um on Big Chief University .com. Well, on the app, my bad. Wherever they got it, it or somebody drop it in here. But you need to register because we're doing different things and we have shit planned and we need to know how many people it is so we can make sure that we take care of everybody. You feel me? So how I look at Sylvia say door dash. I hate them bitches. I'm gonna tell you what they did to me. First off, I kept I kept uh shout out to the sister run to them uh cutting junior them Ohio we went out there for Ohio they gave me uh nah 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 you good uh 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 chief and chief nah uh you already registered now nah, it's just everybody ain't registered yet so we just trying to we're gonna close it down Sunday and we just gonna go with whoever we have on the list right now we 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 got you know we have a number right now so okay shit the output they move fast out there though that output they move fast out there um every time i come out of the hill i go get that johnny rocket so sometimes I get up there a little bit earlier because that Johnny Rocket going to take about 30, 40 minutes for them to be done with your order. When I was in Arizona, I ended up going to Johnny Rockets in there. They had a, uh, they had a casino out there. Man, I can't even remember them Indians. Bro, I got the footage. I got the Arizona footage, bro. I got to put it together. I got to get this Ohio footage up out of there, man. I can't get it out of my phone. I'm going to try to put it on my computer, bro, and try to edit it from there. Because I, I edited it up on my phone, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go. But I'm going to try to do it on my computer, man, because this shit is crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They putting it. They going to put the telegram together. Oh, Elle say she ready to come home. Oh, you crazy. That son hit different out there. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, if you if you are coming out to... Uh, what's that called? Oh, Atlanta. Make sure we register. Uh, our next meeting is Tuesday. Our next meeting is Tuesday. So uh, make sure y'all are there 7 p.m. Central Time Tuesday. 7 p.m. Central Time Tuesday. Um, we closing registration Sunday, man. So get in where you fit in, goddamn me. We finna go make some memories. This one gonna be for the ages, man. Um... You know, we're going to take us into 2023, man. And, um, you know, we're going to build, be stronger. You know, we're going to build ourselves up, man. Then we can go out there and, you know, start networking with, with, with other Indian communities. You feel me? But right now, you know, we're going to focus on us, what we got going on. I'm not, you know, because this is my game, bro, you know. You know, even with the extra shit and all of that, bro, I don't I don't like none of that type of shit, bro. 
none of this bullshit that's going on around here, bro. I ain't feeling none of that shit, bro. And I'm really just trying to stay focused, man, and not even, you know, entertain the shit, you know, because I know it's a lot of people who don't even know. And, you know, we work so hard to get the energy, you feel me, um, you know, back on track. And even this little, you know, this little time down, you know, um, and we end up over here on the back of channel is, uh, you know, it was all, you know, shit happens for a reason. That's why I wouldn't even really just fucked up about that because I had been trying to, you know, get in that place and that space to get the energy right. And then we got over here, we was able to just focus on us and what we was doing it. You know, we got our move, we about to meet up next month. So we was able to focus on us, get around us, no outside energy, no interferences, everything good, bro. But at the same time, everything not good. You know what I'm saying? There's still a little background shit going on, bro, that a nigga ain't feeling from now outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, one or two days, cool, but you know what I'm saying? The, the, the extras, the on and on and on, nah, bro. And I'm trying not to say nothing, I swear, man. I'm telling y'all, I'm trying not to say nothing. You feel me? Like, let's just get past the, the bullshit, man, both sides, bro. I'm down to holler at whoever, bro, about whatever, man, we need to talk about. You feel me? And, you know, we get past this shit, bro. At the end of the day, there's all Indian business, man. And, um, you know, that's that's how I see this shit, bro. We not, we not finna do this shit, though. You feel me? We is. We're not taking this shit in 2023. Square business, bro. Like we we um we done made it to a place in the space, bro, where we just we out the way. You know what I'm saying? We out the way. Don't nobody come around here fucking with us. You know what I'm saying? You know, hopefully ain't nobody got our name in their mind. If they do, we so focused on us that we don't even notice. I don't know what the Albo's doing. I don't know what the Moors doing. I don't know what the Hebrews doing. I don't know what they doing on um, siding them. I don't know what they doing nowhere, bro. Nigga been locked in. I just been around y'all for, you know, it feel like I'm still high off the momentum because it's not even over with yet. We still playing in it. Like niggas running around in the background, people putting together a list and we still organizing in the background, you know what I'm saying? We getting ready for the showdown next month. Like, nigga, we around positive energy. We around, you know, love, bro. We, we, you know, certain shit shouldn't exist, bro, and certain shit shouldn't be giving life, man. You know, it, it is what it is at the end of the day, bro. You know what I'm saying? But we trying to preserve something man, that we can pass home. My game is this here, bro, is to, if you keep the car a certain way, bro, if anything was to happen to anybody, bro, or niggas couldn't be present who know how to push the car, well then, you know, you get a system in place where the motherfucker drive, it, it's, it's automatic, bro. That way when the next generation come, bro, they only gonna do what they seen the niggas before them do, bro. And that's that's that that's that's my biggest thing on it. Like it ain't no examples of shit that that really worked out there. You feel me? That it ain't no example. So what niggas have to go off of? We gonna end up with these FBA ass niggas telling our story for us, the Americans or niggas in it. Nah, bro. Nigga, if we fought too hard for this shit, bro, just to get to where we at. Certain shit, muff, the, the board is, it's a certain way the board have to move when we on the motherfucker, bro. And we not even that big yet. But niggas ain't coming down these, these back ways, man. Niggas ain't turning down these, these you know what I'm saying? So, it, it's, um, we work for that, though. We earned that, man. Ain't nobody finna come fuck with us over here. They know we over here. They not turning down. 
They ain't turning down these corners, brother. And, you know, I, we don't have no rivalries. We ain't, you know what I'm saying? These niggas going to feel how they want to feel. their life. You know what I'm saying? Maybe more than, 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 than we, you know, but it is what it is. Because we don't give a fuck. Because what I'm trying to show niggas is as long as we got each other, we don't need no motherfucking body else. And what's gonna hurt niggas the worst is when we listen, we self-sufficient. We don't need no support. We don't need nobody else. We don't need nobody to come here out of shit. We don't need nobody coming around here. We building up something for us. We ain't gotta leave outside of this motherfucker. All the shit that make us happy or have us interested in this shit or you know that we standing on nigga, you can get it right here amongst us. You know what I'm saying? And we know each other, and we pop out, and we done hugged each other neck, and we done ate together, and we done laughed together, and we done balled out, and we got um, you know, we already got boots put on our car. We done got like it's it. We done went through shit like it's we got memories together. Nah, man, this ain't no nigga. We ain't gotta come outside, nigga. Fuck you, niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's what killing nigga the worst when you don't need them. You know what I'm saying? We gonna build it up. We don't. Need, we ain't gonna need no motherfucking system. We ain't gonna need none of this shit, bro. Everything we need gonna be in house, and the network gonna be crazy, nigga. You know how many motherfucking states and cities we touching right now, nigga? And we ain't even big yet. We little niggas. We ain't even started. The connect game gonna be stupid. Anything you want, everything you want to go. Because when we get there, once we start putting our flag in the motherfucking dirt, nigga, we gonna set up shop, and we gonna create a system where everything going. That's what I'm saying about the business hub. And I don't even think nobody signed up. But this Friday, we gonna do it again, and we gonna run the American Indian business, and uh. I want to show niggas how it work, that it, that this shit here can work on a small scale because I just want to show them an example. And everybody going everybody gonna to win out of it. And it's going to be a small little, little, little cycle. We only taking 10 people anyway that we going to do it with. You feel me? And these, these brands are going to be households you know, gonna be household names amongst us in our community because we're gonna have these products and we're gonna have these things, you know, in our homes, in our families, like they gonna know what it is. They gonna, you know, use the shit in. And we're gonna keep it going as long as we know each other. You feel me? And so you always know that you're gonna get some support. And we're gonna, of course, we're gonna have more American Indian businesses come through or people put like that. Like, it, it, we gotta start somewhere. Then once we get us together, bro, we can go do whatever we want to do outside. But it's a lot of other people have a lot of other things going on, which is cool. And, you know, we want to see everybody win. You dig what I mean? But, uh, you know, we got to make sure we save ourselves, bro, before we get out here, you know, trying to save the world. So it's, you know, it's a process to everything, man. And she, you got to trust the process. It's a slow walk, you feel me? But when you get it, you're going to have everything you need, you feel me? And it's going to mean more because you see, you earned it. You dig what I mean? And in our case, we paving the way. You know what I mean? We, we, we're we setting the trends for, you know, because ain't none of this shit here. And then not only that, we agriculturalists. We bring in agriculture, which builds civilizations because Motherfuckers will just meet us and then they will leave and go build communities and movements off of our message. Like that shit there, our way of life, that shit there is how we live. And niggas come adapt our culture and they go build, you feel me? We the agriculture, we the civilization. Niggas ain't gonna, they can't take that from the youth. They can't take, you know what I'm saying? We just live right now. And our voice ain't as, you know what I'm saying? But when we get it, we're gonna we gonna run a monopoly on these hoes. When we get bigger, we, trust me, we writing everything down. <laughs> when we come, we stepping on them. 
And guess what? They already know it's going to happen. But see, right now, we just going through the process. Because see, it's, 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 it's never been done before. So the shit that we doing, we can't, what I always told y'all, bro, we can't be wrong one time. We can't fuck up one time, bro. We got to get this shit right on the first try. That's the that's what's so cold about what we in, the, the position that we in. We got to get this shit right the first time, nigga. This shit like the motherfucking clock count down, nigga, and you got a, you got a choice, nigga, which one you going to pull? Which why you going to pull, nigga? You got a choice, nigga. To defuse it, but one blow that bitch up, nigga, and one stop the clock, nigga. And that's why we here, nigga, in this time, nigga. That's why we came back in this specific time, nigga. And that's why it's rock and roll. Y'all see how crazy the world is right now, nigga? They brought us back in this time, nigga, because you know what's finna happen? It's a new world order, nigga. Life will never be the same again in a lot of ways. Things are changing from when we grew up. That whole era of motherfuckers going to church, that whole programming of um, <clears throat> they came from 1860. We faded that generation out. You feel me? So the narrative that's wrapped around Reconstruction, slavery, Jim Crow, uh, um, you know what I mean? Um, niggas went nothing but slaves and all that. We would have lasted that generation. This that generation right here is fading out. You know why? You know how we can see that? Because first off. Niggas don't even go to church no more. You niggas was the last. Or you niggas or your kids was the last ones to stop going to church. Bars. Now watch this here. And they run to the, 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 the AME church. I mean, um, the HBCUs. They kind of still doing that now. <laughs> but look, 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 look. We just, this shit, this shit new. Breaking news. Fuck you talking about? Breaking news, nigga. Now, nah, but... This cycle is what I'm saying. And and a lot of our culture is wrapped up in it because it was created to cater, you know, to our culture, right? So, but my point to it is we are the last ones that went through that reality. And so what's about to take place now since we had that understanding and we also are here present doing the reset. You feel me? So we, the last, we seen, we, we the last ones to see Big Mama, the era of Big Mamas, the old spirits, the old connections, AKA nigga, what the roots? Cause they finna cut niggas out from the roots. Put separate you from the groups, nigga. We the last ones. Guess what our message is, family, to, to genealogy. We are here to make sure that that connection is not lost. You understand? So we don't have, and niggas be saying, why I can't even talk about all the other shit that I, I, I studied or learned or on my journey, I can't, I'm so focused on just, I'm just Indian, 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 nigga, just our history, our history, our history, nigga, because I know, nigga, if anything, nigga, it's, it's we out of there, bro. I'm talking about that quick, because they cutting you, clipping your roots. Ain't no more big mamas coming, bro. That culture is gone. It's not being preserved. You don't even understand that it's yours. The niggas is going to be out of there. We that last. Yeah. Um. Now, it's important to me, though, bro. And, you know, uh, that's why we here, you know, for, uh, you know, that's why the you, that's why we here, bro. And, uh, nah, we can't, we ain't got one time to fuck up, bro. And so, man, um, just whatever we got to do, bro, to make sure the car stay in motion, man. Uh, even if that mean, you know what I'm saying, falling back, getting all the way out the way, bro, and going to go get strong. And, you know, when we ready, they the world going to know. You know what I'm saying? And we stepping on shit. 
Man, with that being said, man, I want to appreciate y'all for pulling up, giving me some of y'all time. I want y'all to take this energy out there to the world, man. As long as we got each other, don't we don't need nobody else. You feel me? Hold the line. You dig what I'm saying, man? And um, stay strong, stay powerful, stay positive. The Indian way, the BCU way. That's my time. I'm gone.